Let's see what we got here. Publisher's Clearing House. Magazine subscription. Credit card subscription. Hang on. What's this? Oh no. No. Oh no. Oh god, not not this. Here comes Huey, gonna give you the news Time to watch his animated movie reviews Where the hand-drawn CGI puppets are play If you've got a good story, he'll be making his day See you at the movies Time to a movie See you at the movies Hold on to See you at the movies Back to what he's been hey See you at the movies Animated movies that is Normally I'd introduce myself and talk about what I do in the show, but I don't want to do this. I really don't want to do this. I have no idea how it actually got here in the first place. All I know is it's horrible. The worst thing I have ever seen. Even worse than Baby's Kids and Mars Needs Moms. And Cars too. Yeah, you heard me. This travesty of animation is so horrible that I get a headache just by saying its name. This is... The Groovenians. So, if you're like me, you're probably wondering where this train wreck of CGI came from. Well, it's a rather complicated story. It all started with a painter named Kenny Scharf, whose work consists of popular culture-based shows with made-up science-related backgrounds. Scharf came to prominence in the 80s interdisciplinary art scene, making sparkly, pop-ed, and monstrous paintings and illustrations. And, to be honest, I think his paintings are very expressive and unique. Scharf uses images from the animated cartoons popular during his childhood, such as The Flintstones and The Jetsons. But around 2002, he decided to take a different route and make a cartoon based off his art and design. The result was a pilot that aired on Cartoon Network, never got picked up, and bombed faster than Pluto Nash. This is... The Groovenians. So the special opens up with its own theme, sung by the B-52s. And you might as well know that this is the only good thing in this special. Enjoy it while you can, folks. Because the pilot's about to start. We then fade in on the planet Jeepers. No idea why it's called that, but I believe it's supposed to represent Earth. Here we're introduced to our main characters, Jet and Glindy, who are... Ugh... Beatniks. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the newest act from the Glindy and Jet duo called Zoo Zippowow. And now, here's my zentabulous boyfriend, Jet with a little number we call a free love noise funny fun fun of me this is gonna be painful so yeah they're beatniks or hippies same thing god they're worse than that martian chick from mars needs moms but here's what really hits the nail on the coffin jet is voiced by paul rubens
And then there's his dog, Lucky. The only way to describe his personality is basically a mix between Marvin the Martian's dog, the three-eyed fish from The Simpsons, and that farmer says toy. Mix with all that, and you will have the most pointless character ever! Now here's something that's puzzling me. What exactly are the people of Jeepers? Are they humans or aliens? They all look like humans, but their skin color is varied. Can't help but think that it's a bit too familiar. Hint, hint. And what is up with the front lawn? It looks like a Lego floor. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Anyway, Chet and Glindy are feeling down because people don't appreciate their art. Especially when it comes to Jet's father. And guess who voices him in the pilot? What do you kids think life is? A party? When are you gonna learn that you can't have your cake and eat it too, huh? Yeah. Chet's dad is voiced by Dennis Hopper. Well, he has done weirder roles. Remember the Super Mario Bros. movie? Monkey! <laughs> Play that again! Monkey! Again! Monkey! Again! Monkey! Again! Get on with it! Yes! Get on with it! Yeah! Oh, fine! Jet, we've got to get out of this place! If it's the last thing we ever do, it's just way too restrictive for an artiste like me! Okay, two things. One, that is the worst writing I've ever heard. Two, how do they change out of their flower costumes so quickly? Look, they're just lying on the Lego ground in their outfits, then after the father scolded them, they're in their regular clothes. What the hell? Not to mention the character animation is so stiff that it makes them look like bad theme park animatronics. Well, anyway, a large spaceship flies above them, and yet they don't even notice it. As the ship drops off another beatnik, Nixon, who sounds like a hand-me-down version of Pauly Shore. Jet. Greedy. Yo, yo, I'm back. Make that Pauly Shore and Vanilla Ice. We've heard some really strange stories of what happened to you. Yeah, well, you know, they're all true. What was that all about? What rumors? Do you mind telling us what they are? Guys, I found a place. The place, man. Man, it was great. It's a place where you could be anything you want to be. Where all the hipsters seek refuge. And it's far away from here, man. Anywhere is fine as long as I'm far away from this pilot. Wowzy, what's this place called? Groovinia. Ooh, Groovinia. Echo much? God, you two poop music videos are more original than you! So after that, Nixon is taken by his grandma, but not before giving Jet and Glindy a key to his pad. Which looks like a strange tale or something. The two consider going to Gravinia, and no, I'm not going to make an echo, but are stopped when Jet's dad wants to talk to them. It seems that Jet's parents decided to take charge for Jet and Glindy's choices in life. Game show style! Well, if we're gonna be in a game show, let's add some more contestants. Sean Connery, care to pick a topic? The day is mine! I'll take famous titties for 400. Titles. Famous titles. Yeah! Anyway, as the parents set up this game show get up, no idea why, they have already chose what the two will be doing for the rest of their boring lives. Glindy is given a job as a filing clerk, or as a victim in a tentacle hentai, while Jet is forced to marry Glindy's sister. No. Um... Why? Are you crazy? I love Glindy! And I love Jet! We, we belong, belong together! together. Uh, that's it! I've had it with this free-thinking insanity! Okay, I have some issues with this. First off, they're Jet's parents, not Glindy's. Why are they forcing Glindy into getting a job? Where are her parents? Secondly, they purposely want them to be boring and miserable? What's wrong with them having to be free-thinking? Is Jeepers some sort of dictatorship planet? Third, 
Why would they want their son to marry Glindy's sister? And why are they holding the ceremony? Isn't that illegal? Am I the only one who thinks that the face Jet's mom makes when she's playing the organ is kind of creepy? No. No, 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 no. Well, that and Yalda's happy face. Ugh. Besides, there's only one person I know that can pull off the missing tooth look. SAVE ME, MC Bat COMMANDER! Well, anyway, the two decide to get out of there as fast as possible, which pisses off the parents and Glindy's sister, resulting in... No! I have no idea what's going on. All I can say is Rob Zombie's music videos look more sober than this. because that's what kids want to see. An alien dog humping a plastic tree. Just look at this sequence. There is nothing worthwhile in this. This isn't even surreal. It's just acid-induced nightmare fuel. I mean, look at Sally Crushank's work. She knows how to work with surrealism and animation. And it's not just because it's done with hand-drawn animation. It's because of the proper settings done with each of her short films. Tango Monsters Cartoon Soundboard! Step on it, they're getting away! Now remember everyone, Jeepers is the normal, boring planet. Which only makes me wonder how much more messed up Groovenia has to be in order for Jeepers to be even called the normal, boring planet. But I digress. Glindy decides to throw them off by using her tube of paint, which causes them to crash while the two manage to get away. Ah, uh, they'll be back. So... You're just giving up on them leaving? You're not even gonna continue chasing them? What was the purpose of all that then? Well, after that pointless chase scene, the two manage to fly off to Gruvenia as they are greeted by their flight attendant. And I don't know which is more disturbing, the fact that she has three breasts or the fact that she's voiced by the infamous transvestite RuPaul. Taking y'all booties on a one-way, non-stop, first-class trip to your favorite hood and mine. Ooh. <laughs> Again, with the echo effects whenever someone says Gruvenia! It's not cool, it's annoying! So Jen and Glindy arrive in Groovinia and meet up with Hello, sweet Nuba Cakes. I'm Zazzy, the Juzerino tree, the Groovalicious guide to Groovinia. Juice, love, yeah! What am I even looking at? What does this have to do with anything? Why is it a talking tree? Why does it have ten legs? Why are they freaking out over this? What were they thinking? Oh! But it gets even more disturbing. Just watch what happens next. Oh my, oh me! I see you have a key! Just slide the key inside my slot. A pretty key can tell a lot. Oh, what, what the, the heck? heck? Why, Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, chillin'. I'll have what she's having. 